Good afternoon. It's really wonderful to see so much excitement in this room. Welcome, colleagues, uh, family, and friends. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Carol Bradford. Uh, I serve as the Executive Vice Dean for Academic Affairs, uh, Chief Academic Officer for Michigan Medicine, and a professor of otolaryngology, head and neck surgery. Today, we are all here to celebrate the Larry D. Soderquist Professorship and the installation of Dr. Rodica Busui as the new Soderquist Professor. The Soderquist Professorship was inaugurated in 2010 to support, advance, and accelerate uh, medical research related to type 1 diabetes. It was established through the generosity of William and Dolores Brem and serves as a memorial to Larry Soderquist, the late brother of Mrs. Brem. The program for today's ceremony tells the wonderful story of Larry and Ann Soderquist, as well as the Brem's overwhelming generosity in helping the University of Michigan become a world leader in diabetes education, research, and care. Dr. Busui is a professor in internal medicine in the Division of Metabolism, Endocrinology, and Diabetes, which we commonly abbreviate as MEND, and a prominent diabetologist in the medical school and a recognized leader in the field of diabetes and diabetes complications. Uh, before we begin, I would like to welcome uh, many, many special guests here with us this afternoon. Uh, Ann Soderquist and her son, Hans Soderquist, welcome. Uh, uh, known uh, to many of us already very, very well, I'm honored to welcome William and Dee Brown. Congrats. Next, I'd like to um, introduce uh, Dr. Busui and her family. Her, uh, so uh, Dr. Rodica Busui, she's going to be speaking to us later. Uh, and her family, her husband, Don Roberts, her nephew, uh, Victor Givanescu. Good, got it, of course. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, Next, I would like to introduce uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. John Carruthers, who serves as the John G. Searle uh, Professor and Chair of the Department of Internal Medicine and the C. Richard Boland Distinguished University Professor of Internal Medicine and Human Genetics, Dr. Carruthers. Good afternoon. Isn't this exciting? Is it you excited? <laughs> okay. All right, um, just some prepared comments. Um, today, as we honor and install Radhika Papasui as the Larry D. Sadaquist Professor, I want to uh, congratulate you in, on behalf of the Department of Internal Medicine. I welcome you and your family, your husband and your nephew, Bill and Dee Brim, and, and Hans uh, uh, Sadaquist on this wonderful and momentous occasion. We are grateful for the generosity of Bill and Dee Brim and the Soderquist family for establishing this Larry D. Soderquist professorship at the University of Michigan and perpetual recognition and support to advance and accelerate medical research related to type 1 diabetes. I remember well when the professorship was established. It was around the time I came to this institution and the opening of this very building, the Brim Tower and expansion of the Kellogg Eye Center, and hearing the stories and remembrances, not only regarding Dee's brother, your husband, uh, re regarding his legacy, but also the joy from listening to Bill in regards to his early days when dating Dee, and time spent on these very grounds uh, for where this namesake building uh, is. That's right. I remember that discussion. 
How fitting it is to have those remembrances at this site upon a new inauguration for this Sotoquist professorship. Dr. Rodika Papasui is the most impressive choice to fulfill and hold the Sotoquist professorship. Like Larry Sotoquist, Rodika has earned two doctorate degrees, was a Fulbright scholar, is that correct? Both, was, wasn't Larry a Fulbright scholar? No, I, my mistake then, I thought I saw that somewhere. Um, but also spent time in the state of Michigan. She has, yeah, that's what I thought, okay. <laughs> I might not, okay, I thought I did my homework, but maybe I didn't. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and also as a teacher and educator and spent time in the state of Michigan. Uh, she, was fur she has furthered and developed her leadership skills uh, through the Leadership Academy and the Rudy Ansbacher Leadership Programs in the medical school. And she has been co-director of the Neuro Neuropathy uh, Center uh, and is vice chair for clinical research in our own Department of Internal Medicine. She's very creative. Uh, she's initiating as vice chair a new clinical trials academy at the medical school to train junior faculty in performing high quality clinical trials. This academy just completed its second year and takes in junior faculty from multiple departments to provide guidance and membership, uh, mentorship over seven to eight months to help individual faculty to initiate clinical trials and to facilitate their careers in this space. This will leave a legacy at the medical school, as well as have created a cadre of innovative junior faculty that have obtained ex expertise in clinical trials. Radika's innovation stem from her own training and interests in Romania with her dissertation on oxidative stress and diabetic neuropathy and her internal medicine training all the way to her endocrine training and mentorship and later partnerships at the University of Michigan. Her clinical research interests in elucidating mechanisms underlying the development of diabetes and prediabetes complications have spawned a stellar career with international expertise. At present, Radhika has external support in conducting nine company and foundation funded trials, four NIH-funded trials, and successfully completed for and obtained the University of Michigan's first ever funded diabetic foot ulcer clinical research unit. She has forged external partnerships locally, nationally, and internationally, including connections that will honor the 100th anniversary of the 1921 discovery and subsequent 1922 first use of insulin by Frederick Banting, Charles Bess, and J.J. McLeod at the University of Toronto. Rodika is on multiple national review committees and study sections to lend her expertise for evaluation, but most impressive is her contribution to clinical research that has worldwide impact on how we approach diabetes care to patients. This not only includes her own individually scholarly work, but also members of consortiums that greatly amplify the number of patients to show effectiveness in impact care change approaches, including the DCCT, uh, which is the Diabetes Control and Complications Trial, uh, with EDIC, which is the Epidemiology of Diabetes Interventions and Complications, the Bari 2D study group, and the Action to Control Cardiovascular Risk in Diabetes, or the ACCORD, which is a very famous group that is published uh, extensively. Her contributions to these consortiums, as well as her own individual work, individual work have led to very high impact publications in the New England Journal of Medicine, Diabetes Journals, American Journal of Physiology, Circulation, Nature Genetics, JAMA Internal Medicine, PNAS, and others. I am personally and incredibly impressed by Rodika's contributions to medicine, and our patients are the better off because of those contributions to understanding their disease. Thus, on behalf of my own department and Rodika's department here in the medical school, 
uh, as well as Bill and Dee and Sutterquist's contributions. I congratulate Bodhika on this wonderful occasion. I know you will do well and represent the professorship well. So congratulations. Next, it's my privilege to introduce Dr. Peter Arvan, the William K. and Dolores S. Brem Professor of Type 1 Diabetes Research, Professor of Internal Medicine and Molecular and Integrative Physiology, and Chief of the Division of Metabolism, Endocrinology, and Diabetes. Dr. Arvan. Well, just another day in the life of the men division. That's how it is. It's, uh, you know. It almost gets tiring getting up here making these speeches one after the other. And the funny thing is every time, uh, John steals all the good stuff. And so there's like nothing left to say. That's why I never prepare anything because anything I prepared has already been said. However, this is an exception because yesterday I received an email from David Nathan at Mass General Hospital and the message said, you have to read this message at the inauguration ceremony. So for the moment, and I wrote back to him saying I was gonna run out to the party store and get one of those Groucho Marx mustaches because, you know, he's got this amazing thing and then I was going to try to imitate his voice and then I was like, no, I won't do that. I'll just read his thing. So first I'm going to be David Nathan and then I can say a word or two of my own. I've had the great pleasure of working with Radhika for more than 10 years in the DCCT EDIC and more recently in the GRADE study. As the chair of both of those studies, I know how easy it is to lose sight of the individual contributions of the many investigators who make up the study groups. Rodika has been a standout, leading our efforts in the study of neuropathy in EDIC. As the first author of the ADA position statement on neuropathy, her contributions to understand peripheral and autonomic neuropathy, not only in DCCT EDIC, but in other studies, such as SEARCH and ACCORD, are not surprising. However, she has also contributed her insights and sharp intellect to many other papers focusing on the risk factors that underlie retinopathy, and cardiovascular disease. Rodika has been unstinting in her, con unstinting, that's a good word, unstinting in her contributions to the multi-centered studies in which she has participated. My apologies for not being able to participate in the celebration. On behalf of her many colleagues and friends in DCCT EDIC and GRADE, I congratulate Rodika and the university for its excellent decision making for the singular honor of being named the <laughs> Larry D. Soderquist Professor. So thank you, David. I want to keep this moving along, so I will keep my remarks incredibly brief, but I do want to say just a few things. Uh, first is that uh, the success that Rodica has had, I really want to credit people who came to the division before I was there. Doug Green, who you're going to hear from, uh, Sue Panther, Chip Brogius, and Eva Feldman, who's not here. I mean, there's been really quite a team assembly of people focused on diabetes complications. The place was very strong in the area of diabetes complications before I ever set foot on the campus, and I think it's become stronger still, and to a large extent, it comes from work that Rodica has done here, so I'm, I'm happy about that. Second, I uh, want to thank Dee, want to thank Ann, want to thank Bill. Uh, the contribution to create the Soderquist Professorship creates an opportunity for another rising star uh, grown from within. Um, my summary of Rodika's work is entirely different uh, from John's. It, it really comes down to three words. We work hard. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but I've never seen such a hard worker as this woman. Uh, she is a dynamo uh, and like a cyclone like Dorian. You know, uh, and all of the rest of the medical school is running around uh, just, you know, uh, just trying to keep up. And uh, actually, that's really what the whole men division is about, just a bunch of people top to bottom who really work hard every day uh, and try to make a difference in the lives of other people, particularly uh, as relates uh, to diabetes uh, and endocrinology. Um, and let's see, I think I had one other thing I wanted to say, which I probably forgot. Uh, but I will say, for me, it is a really great uh, moment to watch somebody that we've trained from within. Ah, I remember. 
Uh, I should really write these things down, but I never do. <laughs> so I'll tell a very, very quick story. Um, so when Rodico was still in Toledo and we were uh, entertaining, uh, recruiting her as a faculty member, and she's told this story herself a number of times. Um, she brought her basic science lab and her clinical research program. And I thought about where the division is and where Rodika is in her own career. Uh, and I, shall we say, urged her in the strongest possible terms to close her laboratory, to terminate her basic science career, and focus on clinical research and become an absolute star and expert in it. And both of us feel like that's the smartest decision either one of us ever made uh, because her ability to focus on leading in the clinical research arena has been one of the things that's brought the men division to the forefront of diabetes research in the US. And I'm very, very proud of you. You absolutely deserve this. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you for those comments. Uh, next, I would like to introduce Dr. Frank uh, Chip uh, Brosius, a professor of medicine and interim chief of the Division of Nephrology at the University of Arizona. But he does have Michigan roots and a Michigan her uh, history, so we're going to uh, learn what he has to tell us today. Thank you. Thanks very much, Dr. Bradford. It's, it's a real honor to be back here at the University of Michigan, and it's great to see the Brems here and, uh, and their family here. Uh, so thank you for making all this, this great diabetes research happen here at the University of Michigan. I just get to watch it now from the outside, but it's a, it's a real honor to be here and really great to celebrate uh, Rodika's uh, great achievements. And uh, I'll keep my Remarks very brief, partly because I don't prepare them either, Peter, and, uh, and you stole some of them, so I, you know. <laughs> so, but uh, you've already heard, and I, I just want to underline what a, a superb researcher uh, Rodika is, and uh, uh, her clinical, uh, I think that was a wise decision because she clearly is a great uh, clinical researcher and has done wonderful things in this area. I think it's tough to give up your lab because here at the University of Michigan, certainly when I started, and even I think when you came, you know, clinical research, well, that's what you did if you had to give up your lab, right? You know, and so it uh, wasn't quite, didn't quite have the respect, but I think now we understand, and I certainly understand, um, being uh, uh, acquainted with what Radika has done, that clinical research, uh, good clinical research, is actually a lot harder than what we did in the laboratory. And, uh, and so I want to bring that up, uh, uh, and uh, you may disagree with it, some of you, but I think it's true. And uh, Radhika asked me to come give these comments today because um, she has looked at me as a bit of a mentor. I think it's just because I'm older, but, uh, um, <laughs> but um, I actually have learned, I think, a lot more from her than she ever learned from me, and I, I really have appreciated uh, uh, actually serving as her uh, underling in a, in, a, in a study that's a, a five-year study uh, from, funded by the NIH on diabetic nephropathy, diabetic kidney disease that's uh, going to be reported soon. And as, uh, as Peter said, you know, uh, Radika works extremely hard, but one of her gifts is really getting people to work hard around her. And, uh, and I think you alluded to that, Peter. Uh, she uh, she uh, really knows how to integrate her team together and it treats them all very well and they all are very dedicated to the cause of, of the research that she leads. And in this particular trial that I was associated with, their, this team was always the, the team that recruited more patients into the study and did more to make the study come to completion. So uh, I've learned quite a bit from her and I just... Uh, uh, thank her for thinking of me as a mentor, but I don't think I deserve that. Uh, she will, uh, uh, she does have a number of good mentors here, and you'll hear from Doug here, a true mentor here uh, in a minute. And he was actually a mentor of mine too, so I thank you for that, and the tradition continues. So, um, and, uh, uh, you know, but it's, I, I think Rodika might allude to this later, but, you know, this road of clinical research has not always been a very easy one. And um, I won't, um, imply anything by these comments, but I noticed 
that uh, when I looked at all the professorships in medicine, that only about 10% were held by women. I don't know if you knew that, John. <laughs> and, um, and I'm not saying that it was a hard road because Rodica was a woman a researcher, but you know, I think there, you know, those things are uh, something that, we, uh, that she had to overcome in doing everything that she's done. Uh, and so I'm just really extremely proud of, of what she's done. And uh, in the, the fa now famous words of our uh, senator uh, from Kentucky, the majority leader, you know, nevertheless, she persisted. And so <laughs> thank you so much for persisting, and thank you for being here, and thanks for having me. So. Thank you for those comments. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce Dr. Douglas Green, an adjunct professor of internal medicine in the Division of Metabolism, Endocrinology, and Diabetes. He lef left us uh, several years ago to pursue um, advancing uh, uh, initiatives on the industry side and presently holds uh, many important roles, and I'll probably not pronounce half of them correct, but founder of DAG FEMED LLC, Managing Director of Bus Stim LLC, Head of Research and Development at Neuronasal LLC, and Chief Development Officer at Ophidian LLC, and probably a whole bunch of other things. But Dr. Green, love to hear your comments. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and as the others, uh, I haven't prepared uh, written comments, um, but I thought I would let the moment uh, speak for itself. Um, first of all, uh, the fact that uh, Rodica and, and other faculty members at the University of Michigan uh, were kind enough uh, to invite me uh, to come back after all these years and uh, participate in and experience uh, this occasion uh, is, is very touching and uh, greatly, uh, greatly appreciated. Um, when Rodica arrived in our laboratory in 1995, um, she did come in as uh, a true whirlwind of intellect and effort and enthusiasm uh, that really uh, helped uh, stir a whole lot of excitement and, and interest in, uh, in our laboratory. Uh, she made a great contribution uh, to that. And the fact that uh, I could participate in the very, very beginning of what has been a spectacular journey uh, is extremely rewarding to me personally, uh, and uh, I greatly appreciate uh, the opportunity to have uh, helped you a little bit uh, at, the, at the early days of, uh, of your career. Um, I have listened with great interest to this idea uh, that uh, the two previous speakers have mentioned about uh, the transition or the duality of uh, laboratory research and clinical research. And what I really think, uh, and I think this is a tribute uh, to people like Brodica, is that the old concept of going bench to bedside is really an outmoded concept. And that today, it's bedside to bench as much as it is bench to bedside. It is the patients and their disease that is really teaching us the foundational information that we need in order to treat and cure diseases. And for bench to bedside and bedside to bench to truly 
synergize, takes people like Rodica, who deeply understand both components, and that is the future of medical research in my th way of thinking. And Rodica and her career embodies that. And so this is a great day. This is a wonderful day to honor what you have accomplished, but it's really a day to think about what you will accomplish and what you will bring to medical research and the future of medical research as someone who basically can synergize her deep understanding of science and molecular medicine and the ability to use that understanding to learn from the clinical events that bioinformatics has now permitted us to comprise, coordinate, analyze, and interpret. And it's bedside to bench that I think will be your future and the future of medicine. And I'm delighted to be able to be here today to participate in this ceremony, which I think brings great hope and promise for the future of diabetes and its complications. So thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you so much for those comments. And next, I would like to introduce uh, Eva Feldman, the Russell N. DeJong Professor of Neurology and Director of the ALS Center of Excellence and Director of the Program for Neurology Research and Discovery. She is not physically present today, but will make her remarks via video. Rodika, congratulations. I so wish I was with you today. You know, at University of Michigan, when we do an endowed professorship, we always speak of individuals who are the triple threat. And when I think of you, I don't think of a triple threat. I think that we at University of Michigan won the trifecta. You are the most amazing clinician. We share many patients together, and my patients who have the opportunity to also be cared for by you always thank me immensely and incessantly for the amazing care you give them. And this insight that you have in terms of clinical care has led to some of the most exceptional diabetes-related research that we have here at the University of Michigan. You are a true leader, and you really, Rodika, you are the best. We are so fortunate to have you here at our institution, and I am so fortunate to have you as my collaborator in our multiple endeavors to understand diabetes and its complications. And thirdly, a teacher. Um, you know, I am supposedly your mentor, and maybe 20 years ago that was true, but now you're my mentor, you're my teacher, and you're probably the best teacher, Rodika, I have ever had. You very patiently explained to me all aspects of diabetes, of lipid metabolism, of glucose metabolism, and how it affects our patients, how we can ask and answer sentinel questions about diabetes, about our patients, and come up with new therapies and new ideas. You've really moved the needle in terms of your clinical care, your research, and education. And finally, you know, you are probably one of my closest friends. And for that, I'll never be able to thank you enough. It's been wonderful to get to know you, your amazing husband, Don, and your amazing family in Romania. One of my fondest memories is our road trip to Romania, where we not only gave lectures, but got to spend time with your family. And I got to meet all your original mentors in Romania. Congratulations again, Rodika. I consider you my closest friend, my closest colleague, and we are so fortunate at the University of Michigan to have you.
Well, those were lovely comments. Um, at this um, time, it's my privilege uh, to introduce um, uh, uh, the recipient. Not quite yet. You get, we get to talk about you a little bit first. Uh, Dr. Rodica Basui, who serves as a professor of internal medicine. Uh, as we've already heard, she is a prominent diabetologist at Michigan Medicine and a recognized leader in the field of diabetes and diabetes uh, complications. She is the Associate Chair for Clinical Research in the Department of Internal Medicine and the Director of Clinical Research, Mentoring, and Development in the newly, uh, to be newly established M Diabetes uh, Center at the University of Michigan. Uh, she also serves as uh, co-director of the Neuropathy Center uh, as well. We've heard all about her amazing uh, career and her uh, commitment to the tripartite mission. Um, her translational and clinical research has really focused on understanding the mechanisms of diabetes complications, particularly of diabetic peripheral neuropathy and cardiovascular autonomic neuropathy, and to the, understand their role in the development of high cardiovascular risk complicating uh, diabetes. Her work has been extraordinarily well funded by uh, the institutes, uh, the National Institute of Health, uh, the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, the American Diabetes Association, and the Juvenile Diabetes Research uh, Foundation, as well as other foundations and industry. She has been a principal investigator or co-principal investigator on several landmark diabetes trials funded by the National Institutes of Health. And as we've already heard, it's really through clinical trials that we really transform care for patients. And certainly, uh, her work has led to transformation of care of patients. She has received numerous awards and accolades from the American Diabetes Association and the University of Michigan, and has published uh, numerous papers, I think in excess of 160 manuscripts and book chapters. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Rodica Basui to join me. Dr. Basui, congratulations on becoming the next uh, Soderquist professor. Um, we look forward to um, all you will accomplish as uh, in your term, and we hope there are many terms as the Soderquist professor here at the University of Michigan. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much for the very kind introduction and for this amazing words. Um, it is truly an honor to be here today and share with you critical steps from a journey from Timisoara to Ann Arbor, a journey to fight diabetes and its complications. Before I get started, I'd like to take another moment to acknowledge and thank the and Bill Bram for their generosity to establish this professorship in the honor of Larry D. Soderquist. And thank you, Anne and Hans, for coming. And I'd like to thank Carol, John, Peter, and Martin for their continuous support. I am originally from Romania, this small Eastern European country that has very beautiful natural landscapes and a very rich history of culture and culture that spans more than 2,000 years. And this is Timisoara, the city I was born in and started my career. I had the privilege and the fortune to be raised by amazing parents, my father, Nicolae, and my mother, Elisabetta. They taught me from very early that through hard and honest work, one can always achieve almost anything in life. My dream was always to be a medical doctor. And it wasn't easy to be accepted into the medical school in Romania at the time. The education was free, but the slots were very limited. 
Um, in fact, the, day, the year I applied, there were 100 slots and there were more than 3,000 candidates. But my dream came true and I got accepted in the University of Timisoara Medical School second and graduated first. This is the university hospital where I did my initial rotations when I was a medical student and then an internal medicine resident. And it was actually by pure chance that I was assigned to do my rotation in the hospital wards and in outpatient clinic of Professor Georgia Bacanu, who had the vision that, in fact, diabetes care requires a coordinated effort between medicine, complications, nutrition, inpatient and outpatient. And he founded the first diabetes center there in 1957. When I was a medical student, we didn't have glucose meters. We didn't have continuous glucose monitor. We didn't even have the insulin syringes that might seem obsolete today. In fact, every morning I was rushing to the hospital to boil the urine of all my patients before the words will start and then help dosing insulin with this archaic heavy instrument with blunted needles because of so many boils. And I was shocked to see the magnitude of complications, the life that those patients had. And it was at the time that my mind was set that I will study and learn and I will do everything that is in my power to help all my patients and all patients with diabetes to have a better life. My first mentor was Professor Bacano. He had taught me that it's so important always to talk to the patients examine the patient and listen to the patient because the patient is always right. And these details are critical in the correct medical decision making. In fact, his quote that he would repeat sometimes too often was, details make perfection and perfection is not a detail as Leonardo was said. As a resident and then an uh, assistant professor there, I started working with him in this first diabetic food care limb salvage in Romania. Uh, and then I became even more interested in these complications that resides at the span of, of food complication, diabetic neuropathy. I don't want to go into too much detail, but you know, the peripheral nerves are complex, large myelinated, small myelinated, and myelinated fibers well with distinct role and functions for pressure balance, pain, protective sensation. And in diabetes, there is this progressive damage and loss of all these nerve fibers from small to large, from distal to proximal. And when neuropathy occurs, patients have very serious consequences and poor quality of life and lack of function. The revolution in Romania uh, opened lots of doors. It started in my city. But for me particularly, gave me the opportunity to compete and be awarded a Fulbright scholarship to pursue studies in neuropathy and other chronic complications. And I was very pleasantly surprised when I was reading Larry's biography on, on the internet that he was also a Fulbright scholar. I was called at the US Embassy in Bucharest and I was asked, you got the scholarship, where do you wanna go? And I said, I want to go to University of Michigan. And there was a silence in the room, and I was told, why would you ever go to Michigan? Do you know how cold is there? <laughs> I paused, and then I started reciting well, but Michigan has so much tradition in diabetes research, and quoting Jerome um, Kahn, and Steve Fiennes, and Ron Koenig, and Doug Green. And then they stopped me and said, OK, fine, go to Michigan. And here I am, landing in a beautiful fall morning here in an arbor. And I have to say that that year, winter came very fast. And indeed, <laughs> <laughs> indeed it was cold. <laughs> and I arrived in the division of endocrinology and metabolism when Doug was division chief and uh, kindly took me in his lab. Um, I have to say that Doug was very kind when he uh, describe my arrival. I had very little research experience and clearly had zero experience when it comes to bench and working with animal models. Um, it was, I would like to thank Doug for giving me that chance. 
and who teach me the first steps on what research means. It was a very steep learning curve. Um, and I was even beaten by my rats many times <laughs> at the beginning. However, I persevered and learned, and with the guidance and with the help of many of my colleagues in the lab, particularly Dennis Larkin, slowly I started to understand what I'm doing and make progress. It's particularly gratifying a memory when I have first met Steve Fiennes. It was a couple of months after I have arrived in an arbor during one of the Tuesday noon conferences at that time, that's when they were held. And Steve came to me and said, hi, I'm Steve Fiennes, um, welcome to Michigan. I was so shocked that someone so famous would talk to me. And I said, Professor Fiennes, I'm so honored. I read your textbook and your papers. And he smiled and said, please call me Steve. And I'm actually very happy that someone was reading my papers. <laughs> <laughs> I had my first oral presentation that year, and then with Doug and others' guidance, I've learned what does it take to continue the research and then also engage in all the requirement um, tests to continue also to practice medicine here in US. And eventually I started the clinical fellowship here at the University of Michigan. And during those times, I worked closely with Martin Stevens, my next mentor after Doug has left, and became involved in understanding more in depth this fascinating story of the autonomic nervous system, particularly of the heart, has critical role in maintaining heart function and uh, cardiac performance and working also with um, Dr. David Raffel, we uh, try to improve methods of imaging the heart and the neuropathy of the heart in patients in real time. When I graduated from University of Michigan Fellowship, there were no opening here in the division and I was a little bit um, disappointed. However, everything happens for a reason. I was recruited as an assistant professor at the Medical College of Ohio. And there, with the support of the late Roberto Franco Sainz, the division chief, I was able to open my first lab and working with my graduate student, Aaron Kellogg, uh, on studies of oxidative stress and inflammation, secured my first R21 funding. Um, most importantly, um, I started to truly understand what clinical research means, having the chance to interact and be mentored by Dr. Sol Gianut, arguably one of the most visionary clinical research and leader in developing modern diabetes treatment, who believed in me and allowed me to be a PI there in Toledo in the largest diabetes trial funded by an IHD Accord trial. Eventually, made progress and uh, successfully managed and asked additional questions. And then in July 2005, Peter recruited me back to Michigan as an assistant professor in the Division of Metabolism, Endocrinology, and Diabetes. Another dream comes true for me. Go blue. <laughs> Peter was actually much stronger. And he already told the story, so I have not dwelled into it. But he basically prohibited me to do any <laughs> bad research. And, uh, and uh, I was miffed at the beginning, but I have to thank you for that, because you were right. And of course, I had the, an amazing chance to meet Eva, who has been the most remarkable mentor and role model that I could have ever hoped for. And you heard her speaking. Um, and I can never be grateful enough for everything I've learned from Eva. So I set my work. Uh, and I developed clinical research. So with Supenator, we um, basically designed the first clinical trial looking at an intervention of Mediterranean diet and exercise, targeting oxidative stress, one of the important uh, risk factors for complications. And I was privileged to work in multiple large seminal cohort of diabetes. Um, continuing to work with Saul Ganut and Herzog Gerstin from Ontario, 
we have found and uh, proved that cardiovascular autonomic neuropathy is in fact an independent predictor of mortality in these large accord participants. I was here at Michigan when I was able to join the DCCT EDIC family and work with Kathy and Bill, and then with uh, Eva and Jim Albers and Barb Raffet and later Aruna Sarma in studies looking at neuropathy, risk factors, and then other complications, proving that indeed metabolic memory is available and it's valid for neuropathy. And more recently, um, actually demonstrating that the presence of cardiovascular autonomic neuropathy is a very important risk factor for cardiovascular disease in type 1 diabetes as well. In PERI-2D, we found that it's not just the glucose control, but it's the way that one can achieve glucose control that it's important in preventing neuropathy. And working with EVA, we had the opportunity to phenotype the largest cohort of children and adolescents with both type 1 and type 2 diabetes, and learning through our dismay that the complications are way too prevalent in youth as well. Now, with my young mentee, Dr. Kara Mizokami Stout, we are set to phenotype complications, particularly neuropathy. In the large T1D exchange, more than 100,000 patients with type 1 diabetes in all clinical practices across US. And I could go on and on, but I do not want to bore you. I was very honored when Dr. Solgenut and David Nathan asked me several years ago to co-chair the research review committee of the DCCT EDIC or when the American Diabetes Association asked me to chair the statement on diabetic neuropathy, uh, leading a team of the most acknowledged and established investigators in this field from both sides of the Atlantic. With my colleagues, Crystal and Jim and Brian and Kathy and Kayvon, we were also able to secure the first Diabetic Food Ulcer Consortium awarded by NIDDK here at Michigan. <clears throat> Although glucose control is important, we all know that it's very hard to maintain in the long term, even among the most dedicated patients like those in this city EDIC. And as we've learned from the T1D exchange, when we look at real time, unfortunately, maintaining glucose control is very hard. And as we have also learned from work done by my other mentee, Dr. Lin Eng, and my colleague and friend in neurology, Brian Callahan, in type 2 diabetes, glucose control is not as important in development of complications by itself. And more importantly, when complications are established just by glucose control, one cannot reverse this. So thus, the most recent years of my career, I started to engage in research, trying to understand what are other reasons for complications in order to best find strategy to reverse them. And with my, uh, funding from NHLBI, and in partnering with Claire, Soup, David, Gisela, Scott, and my dearest mentor, Morton Brown, we uh, um, found out that, in fact, the presence of glucose variability is critical in blunting this autonomic innervation and mechanism of protection in patients with type 1 diabetes. And more interestingly is that, in fact, this glucose variability leads to abnormal energy metabolism in the heart that then leads to a deficit in the contraction of, of, uh, of the heart, particularly in women with type 1 diabetes. Most recently with Dr. Anna Matthews, <coughs> Dr. Sue Penatur Menti, as well as with Tom Gardner, my dearest friend and colleague, and Chuck, we are engaging in very complex metabolomic analysis and recently found out that differences in various amino acid and TCA metabolism do have differentiated role in either progression or protection for complications. With Eva, we did, and her postdoc, we did microarray analysis in sural nerve biopsies obtained from patients with diabetes. And we unveiled that inflammatory response is one of the critical pathways that leads to this destruction of nerve fiber. 
which allowed then the design of first of a pilot trial and now a phase two, three trial that fund, was funded by NIDDKs and R01, and I, and I which I hold my first IND. With CHIP, uh, I did a lot of work, but most importantly, this large trial that we designed together with our colleagues, Mike Maurer and Alessandro Dolia, Jos Jocelyn and Cathy Spino here at the School of Public Health, looking at allopurinol to prevent renal loss in type 1 diabetes. And I was so fortunate to work with an amazing group of co-investigators, Nazanin and Lynn and Cindy and Ginny and Brittany here that allowed us to be awarded the top awards by NIDDK. And then, of course, that's then additional research that Matthias received from JDRF and ADA. Very recently, I was very excited that with Alessandro Doria, we finished genome-wide association study in two large cohorts of patients with diabetes, and we found the genetic locus on the chromosome 2Q24, which is associated with a significant progress of protection against developing complication. Studies that now we are going to continue with Martin Myers to understand how we can target that to find therapies. But it's not about myself and has never been. I was fortunate to be here at Michigan, and most importantly, to have the most amazing team of colleagues. The team, the team, the team, as Bo once said. And Tom and Matthias and Soup, Eva, Scott, Lynn, Brian, Joyce, Kara, and many more we are now engaging in these exciting studies looking at the heterogeneity in the risk of complications and beta cell failure. And it's so exciting that we work together. I had amazing mentors, and you have heard from many of them. And here, indeed, I am in Romania with Eva and my former mentor, Professor Bacano, and I was awarded Diabetes Honoris Causa, the highest distinction that the Romanian Diabetes Association does offer, and uh, here are many of my mentors. And it's my team and all my friends and colleagues. Nothing can be done, and I could have never achieved anything without all of you. And then, of course, my young mentee, Lynn Cara, and now Alex and Sal, to whom I hope to pass the baton very soon. My funding agencies. And I'd like to thank you, Dee, for sharing your inspiration and life with me and for your courage on a daily basis. And also all my patients and all my research participants who inspire me to keep going and continue to work. Lastly, my family, my mother, my sister Anka, who is a professor of dentistry at the University of Timisoara, my nephew Victor, who came from Romania here graduating from Oswald, my stepdaughter Ellie, and my adoptive family here in Arbor, Marina, Dick, Lara, John, Sophia, and Matteo. But most importantly, I would have never achieved everything I, ha I have achieved without the unwavering support of my brilliant husband, Don, the love of my life, with whom I share the life journey, whether it's on the ski slopes, visiting amazing places, or cooking dinner together in the kitchen after a long day at work. Thank you so much. Well, these uh, ceremonies never do disappoint, and this one certainly didn't. Wow, is all I can say. Remarkable career, and we can only wait to see all you will accomplish, you and the, fab the fabulous team uh, that uh, has gathered to really help conquer diabetes. So thank you all for coming to this wonderful ceremony. Thanks, uh, uh, or congratulations again to Dr. Basui, 
on becoming the Larry D. Soderquist Professor. Uh, I invite you all to uh, the reception, uh, to the lobby for a lovely reception. Thank you all. <laughs>